You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir. I'm running the latest build. It's got more exclusive content for Lucas and a new updated, uh, an updated alternate outfit for Wallace as well. So when we get to Lucas, we're going to have plenty of content to get through. But for now, we're going to continue uh, our route with Lee, the awesome possum. But anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy me entertaining you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in. Oh, I'm saying you're up. And let's go. All right. <clears throat> that certainly helps, and I'm always worried about you. I just thought you'd be settling in, and I didn't want to stress you out. Mom, if you ever need to talk, you know both your father and I are always here. Despite myself, I can't stop myself from smiling and my eyes from getting misty. There's so much I want to say, but nothing comes out of my mouth. It's like my voice has been stripped away. We love you, baby. You mean the world to us. I love you, too. I'm barely able to croak it out. The words are hoarse, and I can't stop the wobbling in my voice. I hope it doesn't worry them too much. So what's bothering you? Nothing's wrong. I just saw something, and it made me want to call you, to let you know that I love you. Oh, baby, you don't know how much that means to us. That includes your father, too. There's that soft chuckle again, and I can't stop myself from joining her. It's more somber now, and I can feel a warm tear wetting my cheek fur. After Marcus, you stopped talking to us as much as much, and we didn't want to push you, but we were scared we weren't doing enough. It causes my breath to hitch. It makes my blood run cold. Surely they can't think I blame them for what happened. No! No! You two are perfect! I just... I, I just needed time. I, I think I still need time. Of course. Take as long as you need, but don't be scared to call us if you need us, okay? I won't. I promise. That's my boy. Now, have you made any friends? Yeah, <laughs> I have. Oh, reconnect with your mom. Hanging up the phone, I feel like a weight has been thrown off my chest, and I can finally breathe for the first time in years. It's an amazement that I'm not. It's an amazement that I'm not heaving. It's just a simple phone call, just a tiny chat between mother and son. But it felt like so much more than that. Like it had been the first time in a long time that we truly talked to each other. After all the hassle this diary has given me, I can't help but feel a little grateful for finding this little thing. I'm not sure I would have, have had the strength to call them otherwise. I wouldn't call it a blessing, but I am glad for it, for it at this moment. Of course, I think Lee deserves more thanks than, than even the book. It's only because of his encouragement that I could even try. I know I can't fix his home life. It sounds truly broken, and I don't think there's any repairing that, but I still wish I could help. It's not much, but I'll try to be as good of a friend as I can. I get the feeling that he doesn't have a lot of those. We're similar in that regard, though I imagine we don't have any have any for very different reasons. It's strange just how relieved I am feeling about the whole thing. It doesn't fix everything, but it does make me feel a lot better about be about before. I'm about to head back towards the group when I notice something outside the window. Something very concerning. It's Lily. Except she's not looking like herself. She's still talking on the phone, but she seems upset. She's covering the phone like she's trying to hide what she's saying, and the fur under her eyes looks wet. I wouldn't say she's crying as much as her eyes are watering. There's a solemn aura around her like this phone call is actively draining all her playful energy. It's so different from how she normally is that, for a moment, I think it might be someone else but a Shiba Inu wearing yellow cardigan is too recognizable. And just like that, she ends her call, wiping red tears with her free arm, and I can feel my chest tighten because there's someone there, a friend who needs my help. Bile rises up in my throat as the memory of that cold night on the beach floods through me. The salty smell of the beach makes me feel lightheaded. I have to steady myself on the bookshelf to stop myself from keeling over and vomiting on the floor. When I look up, Lily's walking away, walking away along the side of the building. Her movements are stiff and she's still clutching her phone in her hand. She occasionally stops to take a deep breath and clean herself up. It's a sad, lonely sight. No matter what it takes, I won't let someone who needs my help go through things alone. Not again. Never again. With unsteady steps, my head spinning in a dizzying frenzy, I manage to get back to the others. By the time I arrive, I'm walking straight, en straight enough to hopefully not rouse any suspicion. I give up any pretense of still working. The three of them are all sitting around the large desk. All of them look super relaxed, even if none of them are talking. If I wasn't so out of it, I think I'd be excited that everyone's getting along. Lucas is trying to use his, his phone while Oscar is leaning over to peek at his screen without any sense of shame.
Lee's just leaning back on his chair, looking directly towards me with an expression so neutral it's genuinely unsettling. Lee quirks a question questioning eyebrow, and I quickly respond with a wave that I hope comes off as nonchalant. I hope I don't look as ill as I feel. I'm not sure if he sees right through me and isn't saying anything, or if he just didn't notice. I changed my mind. Being the quiet type isn't great at all. When I sit back in my pre previous chair, it and Lily's were thankfully left vacant, being surrounded by everyone else's com by everyone is comforting. And pushing the negative thoughts away, I close my eyes and embrace the lackadaisical atmosphere. A sound of footsteps causes my eyes to open, and when I see Lily, she's already looking better than she did outside, but there's still little specks of evidence sprinkled about. The fur under her eyes are still damp, but now they're more disheveled as if she tried to wipe them dry. Her slightly bloodshot eyes are only barely concealing any problems. But she's smiling, and while it's a sad undertone, it still feels genuine. Whatever the call had been about, she must be glad it's over and back with her friends. Her friends. Us. Me. She's looking for some comfort right now, even if we're not supposed to know that. And bringing up what just happened would only do more harm. She'll open up to us, us if she wants. I don't want to push her even if I want even if I want to help. So I do what she needs right now. I give her a smile and a little wave. When that she returns with her own smile before coming to sit next to me. It's small, but being there for her is all I can do at the moment. Hey, sorry about that. I hope I didn't keep you guys waiting. We weren't. Wallace disappeared for a bit. She glances toward me with a curious glint in her eyes and a sly smile on her face. I don't want to know what's going on through her head. By himself, unfortunately. All these choices and he chooses alone. I just called my mom. It wasn't anything weird. Oscar and Lily give each other a look that I don't recognize, and there's a sense of dread that rapidly fills my chest. Of course you were, man. What else would a guy would a guy do if they sneak off alone? Well, I managed to stop my face from flushing at the initial comment. It's Lily's giggling that finally breaks my resolve, and I have to look away as my ears burn. <laughs> I don't get it. Just ignore them, kid. They're being stupid. The faux insulted gasp Oscar gives in response is too dramatic for even him, and he just shakes his head with a grin on his face. Yeah, I can't pull that off. Sorry, Lil. Lil, what kind of nickname is that? Okay, man, look, there's not a lot of places you can go with Lily. You don't shorten anyone else's name. I'm testing the waters. No need to settle down so fast. The eye roll that Lee gives in response is so incredibly childish that it causes my eyes to widen. When Lee smiled afterwards, I can't help but wonder if he's finally warming up to him. Oscar really brings out this different side of him. Their dynamic is certainly strange. They bring out the worst and best of each other at the same time. What about Wallace? I haven't heard him. You haven't heard him call you anything that isn't dude or man. I'm not a big fan of nicknames. I'd really just prefer Wallace. I'll keep it at Wallace then. It's a cute name anyway. You're very biased towards Wallace. A name the name you gave me is very demeaning. Oh, you're cuter when you're cute when you're grumpy. That's why I call you that. In an act of supreme confidence or utter stupidity, Oscar reaches over and ruffles Lucas's head for between his ears. The fox is so stunned that he doesn't even react for a second before the growls at Oscar before he growls at Oscar, but the growing blush peeking through his fur tells a different story. But if you want me to stop, I will. Don't want to ruin anyone's day. The fox looks down at the table as he starts to fidget with his ears, his face still visibly burning through his dark fur. If that wasn't enough, it's incredibly hard to not notice his tail thrashing behind him. It's really annoying, but my mom calls me grumpy too, so that's okay. You're encouraging him. The snort, the curling at the edge of, Luke, of Lee's mouth belies his scolding tone, and when Lucas looks confused at the comment, he only, takes, he only shakes his head instead of elaborating. It looks like Lee doesn't have the heart to tease him. Soon enough, Oscar's trying to hug the fox, and, Lee half and Lee's half-hearted efforts to stop a scrap from breaking out makes everything feel so warm and affectionate. The giggling next to me brings my attention back to Lily and the memory of what I just saw moments ago. Looking back at the group, it's clear they're preoccupied for now. I don't think prying is a good idea, but simply checking up on her should be fine, right? Hey! I'm worried my whisper might be too soft with Lucas now yelling at Oscar about belonging in a strip club. Now I wish I knew the context, but she turns towards me. Her previously bloodshot eyes are now returned back to their soft gold on white. No signs of crying outside of the stiff clumps of dried fur under her eyes. You wouldn't even be able to see to see if you weren't looking for it. Hey there, I hope everyone behaved. Did you have to stop any fights from breaking out? 
I'm pretty sure Lee's the one who stops the fights. I'm surprised when she shakes her head and points to me before leaning forwards to join me in whispering. It looks like whatever happened outside hasn't quelled her hasn't quelled her playful personality. I think Lee causes just as many fights. He's a bit of a prude. She gives a giggle that's filled with such a sweet tone that I can't help but smile back towards her. They get along a lot better than they make it seem. I think they're all growing on each other. They are? Better than that day in the library. Lucas isn't straight up insulting people anymore, and Lee's talking a lot more now. Or maybe you didn't notice because they're all so nice towards you. That causes me to sit up straighter in my chair and even a sneak a glance towards the others. Thankfully, they're all still distracted with Lee trying to stop Oscar from making Lucas grope his biceps. Really? You're so oblivious, aren't you? Lucas is right. Oscar does have a bias towards you, but they all do. I don't think I deserve that. I almost jump completely out of my skin when I feel a hand on my cheek. It's not an action I'm used to feeling. Even my mother would only scratch under my chin at most. I'm still not used to having such openly affectionate friends. With both Oscar and Lily, I'm not sure my heart is going to last the rest of the semester. You're a sweet guy, and they see that. You don't need to be so harsh on yourself. Now I'm beginning to blush just like Lucas across the table, who is now staring towards us with a raised eyebrow, but he swiftly turns his attention back to Lee, who is now scolding the two of them. Leaning back, the feelings of her fingers sliding off my cheeks sends a shiver up my spine, which she notices and lets out a soft laugh that she tries to hide behind her hand. I need to change the subject. I'm getting distracted. Are you doing okay? You looked a little upset when you came back. I don't want to pry. I'm just worried. Bracing myself for her smile to drop, I'm with flabbergasted when she smiles even brighter. It's filled with so much admiration that I can feel my cheeks burning so hot that I know my white fur isn't hiding anything. This is what I mean. You're so caring and kind. Yes, I'm doing good. Great, even. Hanging with friends always helps. I want to ask about the call. I want to ask so badly, but I know it's not my place. I have that dark need in my chest burning. I gotta restrain myself, just a little. Lily makes the choice for me when she calls out to the group. So, how did our investigation go? Did you boys find anything interesting? Everyone stares at me first when I meekly look towards Lily. She gives me an encouraging nod. This isn't something I'm going to get used to anytime soon. I guess this is my punishment for being a loner for so long. <laughs> oh, Lord. That seems more like more than enough for today. Despite only being here for an hour or two, I'm already feeling drained. The others look like they're handling this much better than I am. In fact, all of them are look, look still ready to go, even Lee. Though the scowl he's wearing on his face gives that energy a new meaning. I don't mean to be a downer, but we didn't exactly get much shit done. In the end, it doesn't look like we learned much. In the end, it doesn't look sound like we learned much of anything of substance from our investigation today. Just some hunches and leads, but nothing to use in our report. It turns out most of these people were just that. Uh, normal people. There's a chuckle, and I already know it's Oscar before I even turn my head. He's leaning back in his chair, balancing himself on his large tail. I really hope this doesn't get out of hand. I... Come on, man! It's just the first week! There's no need to be so serious about it. We've only had one class, and the whole thing was just about figuring it out. They don't expect us to have it all done by next week. Trust me, I am a senior. Yeah! Lily bounces out of her chair with more enthusiasm than I think I've ever felt in my life. After returning from whatever that call was, she quickly returned back to her joyful self after only a couple minutes hanging with us. We got some information on the important people related to this event. We can talk about how the media portrayed them, too. We're doing great. I think. The rest of the class has only just started. I got other classes to work on. You might be willing to dump all your time into a general education class, but some of us have actual real classes to worry about. Lucas sits up straighter with a huff, his crossed arms tightening as he tries to make himself look bigger than he is. His ears might make him look taller than me, but Lee still towers over both of us, and Oscar's just a giant, even while he's sitting. It makes his attempt to appear on the same level as him rather childish. But his comment did drag the conversation to a halt. No one else looks like they're going to say anything after that. Maybe Lucas went a little too far there. He must be thinking the same thing, too, because he begins to sink down in his chair while his ears press down against his head. I think I can hear him muttering an apology under his breath, but it's so soft, I don't think anyone caught it. But now is my perfect time to interject. Well, um, I think we're doing good, uh, even if we haven't gotten really far. I I've enjoyed hanging out with you guys. I'm just, I'm not very used to hanging out with friends before. I'm not sure if it's my imagination or the way that Lee softens up my words, but I swear I can physically hear the tension melting away in the group. It's like a waterfall is flushing away the atmosphere in its torrents. Right. Sorry, kid. I guess I was just taking this shit a bit too seriously. It's not a bad thing to care about your studies. 
Yeah, we're burning big bucks to come here. It's good that you're dedicated. Just lighten the moods, just lighten up sometimes. You're gonna pop an eyeball, specifically with all the glaring you do at me. It causes Lee to, to snort, and just like that, everyone's smiling again. I want to say it's emotional whiplash, but it feels right. Exhausting, but right. Are friendships always this exhausting, or maybe I'm overworking myself? Or maybe I messed myself up a little too much with the diary. Actually, that makes more sense. If I'm this tired, I wonder how tired Lily must be. She looked a lot worse than I did. I hope she's not pushing herself for our sakes. Uh, speaking of Lily, she picks up the diary and holds it and holds it up with an overdramatic flare. We're already with why would we blah. We already have a big advantage on this project. With this we have an extra leg up on this assignment, so let's just have fun for now. <laughs> suddenly, suddenly a loud car horn screeches from the parking lot next to the library, the ugly noise piercing through the quiet building. Our table must be right next to it. The loud sound causes Lily to jump, dropping the diary on the floor in the process. She's not the only one startled as Lee immediately jumps to his feet. Oscar and Lucas are still sitting, both staring at the st both staring at the two standing members of our team. Oscar's raised brow and a smile and smile a stark contrast to Lucas's wide, frantic eyes that flicker over towards me intermittently. But there's something about the car horn that sounds off. Off in a way that's awful to hear, and it's awful and familiar. In a way that twists my gut to the point where I'm scared I'm going to lose my lunch. Before I can stop myself, I'm already on my feet and looking around the room. I must look like someone having a manic attack because manic attack, especially in this, if this is like last time, I must have fallen asleep again. I don't want another nightmare. However, this time the others look just as confused by the reverberating sound, and I'm not sure if I should feel my feel contorted and feel feel comforted knowing that it's just me or hor that it's not just me or horrified that it's something they can hear too. What was that? It sounded weird as hell. Maybe... Oscar's cut off by a sudden cracking sound, and before any of us can react, the ground beneath us shatters. And just like that, I'm falling into darkness without even a chance to glance at the others. This awful darkness, this familiar sensation of dread. Nothing good is ever found in the dark. When I finally come to, the first thing through my mind is just how uncomfortable whatever I'm lying on feels. Opening my eyes, everything's blurry and the light above is strong enough to cause a throb of pain to pulse within my skull. Jesus Christ! I'm trying to push myself to my feet, my sluggish body barely barely responds to my brain's commands. What should have taken me seconds feels like it took, took minutes just to push myself to my hands and knees. Despite how much time it took, it's still too fast for my body and I almost vomit onto the floor. The retching motion causes blood to rush to my head. But some small, by some small miracle, I'm able to keep my lunch from exiting my body, but it's only a small victory. Because I'm finally able to comprehend my surroundings. It only adds more questions. Questions with very bad implications. The first thing I notice is just how white all the walls are. They're covered in posters ranging from diagrams of the human body to general notices. Looking down, it's very clear what the hard surface I had been laying on had been. The hard, the hard linoleum floor with a soft blue tint. I'm in a hospital waiting room. A small waiting room like one situated outside a doctor's office. What? What's going on? The first thing I notice about this hospital is just how quiet everything is. There are no people moving throughout the building, no chatting between nurses and patients, no beeping and buzzing of equipment. There's nothing but oppressive silence that tightens its grip around my lungs, making it hard to breathe. I need to calm down. Just calm down, Wallace. Looking around the room, the small waiting area doesn't have too much inside it. There's a cushioned bench, a small stand, and a shelf filled with rows of pamphlets. The room is uncomfortably white with how clean the floors are, but I swear for a moment in the corner of my eye I can see the floor of the furniture rotting. It's never there when I look directly at it. The sterility feels fake. And while the floor is absent of any dirt, there are little pamphlets scattered across the floor. There are layers of colors and layers of colors and words that look almost pretty when you don't focus on them. Picking one up, it has a small raccoon crying on a desk, and the whole thing is drenched in monochrome. The words, do you need someone to talk to? Does any, does someone else you know you need help? Does someone else you know need help? Are plastered across the top in big block letters. Does someone else need my help? The tightening in my chest worsens and my breathing speeds up again. I know I shouldn't let this get to me all, but, uh, but it's all too much. This whole room is just too small. It's suffocating. Dropping the pamphlet, I rush out into an equally empty hallway. It's arguably just as eerie as the waiting room, but the relief that washes over me is much more prominent. Okay, Wallace, what's going on? What's exactly going on? Am I dreaming again? Should I pinch myself? The pain doesn't happen in dreams, right? Oh. Admittedly, I learned that from a fictional romance book, but I think it's true. 
and pricking the back of my hand with the tip of one of my claws, there's a small rush of stinging pain that lasts only a moment before passing. I'm pretty sure that counts as pain, so not a dream? I hope it's not the much darker option of kidnapping, but regardless of what it is, I need to get out of here. I contemplate calling for out for, who, for anyone else, for everyone else, but for everyone else. They might be here too, but if this is a kidnapping, I don't want to tip off whoever took me here. Surely I'll find them eventually if I just look around. Pulling out my phone, there's a brief moment of relief that it's not missing or been taken, but that's quickly dashed. I hold down the power button, expecting a burst of light, but the screen stays black. Oh shit, it must mean must be out of power. And shoving it in my pocket, I bring my focus back on getting out of wherever the hell I am. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been a new episode of Violet Memoir, Lee's Path. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!